Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. You're welcome to the night of tributes um, for Pastor Nomti Odukoya. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, we also recognize that there are people uh, online. Um, so please ensure uh, that you can follow us also. Please let's rise up to our feet. Thank you. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you because you are good and you are God. No one like you. To be you be all the praise. Thank you El Shaddai, mighty God. Faithful is your name. We honor you mighty God for who you are. Thank you Jesus. To you be all the praise, to you be all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Very quickly, we're going to start this night of tributes with praise and worship. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. We believe in this church and pastor, uh, in this church to love, to, we love to praise the Lord. And um, it was one of the things Pastor Nomti loved a lot, to praise the Lord and to worship the Lord. I'll hand you over to the choir, the Grace Levites, as we take a time of praise and worship. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Could we just lift our hands to the God of heaven? We worship you, Jesus. To you we give all our praise. To you we give all our adoration, Lord. We exalt your name, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Almighty God. God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. The sovereign God, we bless you. Sovereign God, we exalt your name. 
We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because he's God forever. Exalt him because nobody's greater.
together for El Shaddai. Let's acknowledge the El Shaddai, the many breasted God, the almighty God. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we honor you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, King of glory, mighty God. You are wonderful indeed. Father, we thank you for this gathering. Thank you because unto you shall the gathering of the people be. Thank you because tonight your presence will be heavy. Thank you for lives that will be transformed tonight. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, officially, let me welcome you to the night of tributes for our dearly beloved Pastor Nomti Simangele Rosemary Odukoya. Um, <clears throat> she lived a life that pleased God and glorified God. And it pleased God to take her at this time. We celebrate her life. Let's put our hands together as we celebrate an icon that God has used to bless us in this church and well beyond. Hallelujah. Just before we go on, we have many friends here, um, both here and online, who are worshiping with us. And we would like to recognize uh, a number of them. Permit me to start the recognition this evening. With us this evening is His Excellency, uh, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, <laughs> Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Thank you for being with us at this very difficult moment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Also, in the uh, auditorium this evening is His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, uh, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, 
thank you so much for sharing this time with us. We really, really appreciate it. As I go on, um, like I said, we have many friends who are here. We will be recognizing them um, uh, um, as we go on. Uh, but uh, before then, I'd like to recognize a father in the house who uh, is the father of our father, my own grandfather, and his dearly beloved wife, Bishop and Bishop, Bishop Mike and Bishop Peace Okonkwo. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma. You have been with us throughout the journey, and we really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, as we go on, we would like to sing the first hymn, Great is His Faithfulness. Great is His Faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. Is the choir coming up? Please, let's make it quick. Pastor Nomti blessed us with so many things in this church. It's a reason we sing Zulu songs here. Hallelujah. Please rise up on our feet for the opening
Hallelujah. Thank you, Grace Levites. Indeed, strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. God is providing strength for today and strength always in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, just before we go on, um, I'd like to recognize uh, the presence of Reverend Joe Olaya also. Thank you, sir, um, for taking this time to be with us. Hallelujah. Amen. We will proceed uh, in this night of tributes for Pastor Nomti Udukoya with the first Bible reading. And this is going to be taken by Timilei Udukoya. Let's encourage Timilei. Let's encourage him. Let's encourage Timilei as he comes up to take the first Bible reading. From 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 to 10, and he will be reading the TPT version. Good afternoon, church. My name is Timilei Udukoya. And the Bible reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. And it says, We are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within, so that, is, so that this immeasurable power will be seen as God's, not ours. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. At times we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but not out. We continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you. Thank you, Tim Lane. That's such a powerful, that's such a powerful scripture. Hallelujah. We may be knocked down, but we're not out. We will always stand up. The righteous may fall seven times, but the righteous will always get up. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, that Bible reading. Um, we would also like, to, because it's a night of tributes, um, Pastor Nomti meant many things to many people, to people in the house here, to her friends, to family, and we'll be hearing just... Um, <clears throat> short tributes from all these people uh, in, in a few minutes. But just before we do that, I'd just like to recognize a few more um, pastors, men of God, who are in our midst this evening. Uh, Reverend Emiko Amoshuka, thank you for coming. Pastor Austin Ukachi, thank you for coming. Pastor and Mrs. Obisheson, thank you for coming. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. David and Sumbo Adioye, thank you for coming. Uh, Pastor Ulugbe Mile Omaumi, thank you for coming. And Pastor Sarah Omaku, thank you for coming. God bless you. As we go on, we we'll recognize more. Um, very quickly, we proceed to the tributes. And like I said, that Pastor Nomti meant so many things to many people. Uh, the first person I would be calling uh, is the vice chairperson of Grange PTA, Mrs. Cheka Mina. Um, the Chekamina, please come forward to give your tribute. Thank you. Let's encourage her, please. Good evening, everyone. Permit me to stand on existing protocols, please. Um, Pastor Nomti, we know her in, um, I'll start by saying it's a privilege to speak um, about her on behalf of the Grain School community. We know Pastor Nomti as Timilene Yodu Koya's mom. That's how we often refer to ourselves in Grain School. You see, um, Pastor Nomti was a very, very cheering woman. She was so cheerful that everybody that came across her path, she always had a smile. And her children were in Donga House, and Pastor Nomti supported Donga House so 
much that it was almost as if she wanted to be an athlete. She was always cheering on. And when she couldn't make into house sports, she would ask for pictures. She would ask um, Papa, please take pictures and send to me. I want to see what's happening there. And Papa go around looking for how to get pictures across to her. Aside from the fact that she was a Dunga house lover, she loved all the other children. She loved Benue house, Ogun house, Ninja house, and she made sure that she spread this love equally. Pastor Nomti reached out to me a while back and she just said, hey mommy, um, I would like you to do something for me. And I was wondering what it was and I reached out and I said, um, yes, Mama, how can I help you? And she said, please, I want you to add somebody to our year seven group. Initially, I, I, could, have, I could have just said no, because most times we want just parents to be on the group. We want to have outsiders joining the group. But somehow within, I just said, of course, Mama, we'll add that person on. And she gave me a contact, and I added the person on. And she said, thank you. And you know, I was so glad I did that because that was about my last conversation with her. I will just leave us with these few words. In the situation where we have to choose being right and being kind, I think it would be best for us to choose being kind because you never know what the other person is going through at every point in time. And when you are kind, it just has a way of making you feel very fulfilled with your act of kindness. May her gentle soul rest in peace. Amen. Thank you very much for those um, very kind words. Just showed you how involved Pastor Nomti was with her community, her children's school community. Hallelujah. Um, the Home Affairs Unit is the Married Women's Fellowship of this church, which uh, Pastor Nomti headed. And I would like to call uh, the chairperson of the Home Affairs, uh, Mrs. Ayo Yusuf. Good evening, church. Uh, we're standing on the existing protocol. Pastor Norm, as we fondly call her, was a, a mother. And uh, beyond being a mother, Pastor Norm too was a friend. And um, she was ready to listen to any conversation and she wasn't just a spiritual mother she was our friend Pastor Nomti came into our lives and um, she actually changed the trajectory of women she brought simplicity into what it means to be a woman Pastor Nomti, we talk about anything and everything. She wanted every woman to enjoy their lives. I remember one of the meetings that we had in 2019. When Pastor Nomti would bring specimen to let you see what to do, she would not only preach to you, she would not only talk to you, she would follow you to ensure that you do the right thing, enjoying your life as a woman. We miss her, we miss her greatly. We miss her greatly. And may our gentle soul rest in peace. Thank you, Mrs. Yusuf. Um, Pastor Nomti is 
the proponent of the enjoy your life mantra enjoy your life ministry and um, i'm sure coming in you've seen some ladies wearing those t-shirts uh, saying enjoy your life she believed in enjoying your life hallelujah amen uh, the next person i would call was somebody who walked very very closely uh, to her um, let's put our hands together and make welcome her pa a personal assistant pastor bisoe okoli Good evening, church. Good evening, stars. Good evening, Mars. I would like to stand on the existing protocol. Um, Pastor Nomti was love. She was the perfect definition of 1 Corinthians 13. She believed all things. She hoped all things. She was ever forgiving, ever loving. She was light. She just had a way of brightening up every room with her smile, with her dance steps, with her laughter. Um, personally, I've had the privilege of working with her for over eight years. And I think that that's about the most wonderful experience I've ever had. You know, it's one thing to be a pastor and stupid, but what working with someone closely does is that it gives you access to them. And she wasn't just a pastor, she was a Christian, a true Christian. She lived every single bit of what she preached. She wasn't hypocritical, she was as gentle as gentle can be. She was as loving, she was full of wisdom. She would say to me, Bisoye, if you have nothing kind to say about someone, say nothing about them at all. That was who she was. Um, she wasn't just my pastor. I thought the relationship was going to be pastor member. She became more than my pastor. She was my mother. And I'm not just alluding a label to her. Pastor Nantini literally did omugwo over the phone. She would call me and say, are you breastfeeding? You are not a cow. Don't give your baby milk, cow milk. Do exclusive for six months. She was that involved. She was so involved in the life of my kids that she gave them Zulu heritage. And I know that Sitelo and Lindani will miss her greatly. I remember one time, my four-year-old had started writing and he wrote his first Christmas card. He said, Merry Christmas, go, go. Because the Sunday ritual was to always go to our office after service. And she would ask them, what did they learn in school? And teach them how to apply it. So he came really excited. I was like, go, go, see my letter. And she was jumping. I mean, she was leaping off the floor, jumping as excited as a four-year-old boy. I call her Mommy Gio. This was the first time I was seeing mommy, a Mommy Gio jump. I whipped up my phone and I started recording. At the end of their excitement, I showed her the video. She was like, send it to me, send it to me, I'm going to post. When that episode ended, I sent her a note and I said, thank you. You are the answer to one of my prayer points. As someone who grew up with a grandparent, but unfortunately my kids don't have one, I always pray to God that they would have what it feels like, they would know what it feels like to have a maternal grandmother. And she did that. She loved them exclusively like it's almost unexplainable i remember in september my four-year-old uh, my six-year-old sent her a voice note a video sorry and said i'm looking forward to your next birthday i'm going to buy you a gift even in pain she called him back and said yes i'm excited about the gift that i'm going to receive that was the kind of person she was she taught me how to pray she would stop in between work and say be so let's pray in the holy ghost she would ask me are you praying you better not be caught sleeping on a bicycle not praying with pastor Nomti." She was a warrior. I remember doing all this. I would ask her, are you sure you want to take this ministration? She would look me in the eye and say, yes, Bisoe. God gave me a word for these people. And I would see her show up at every ministration with a very big smile on her face through the pain and sharing a heartfelt word from God to these people. And sometimes they would call me back and share me testimonies. And I would call her back and say, this is the testimony if God can do this through you then it's amazing what he would do for you and you know some of them called me back after this and they said Bisoye do you mean that she was ministering at those conferences even while she was going through all this and the answer was yes why 
the master assignment of our master was our utmost priority. This evening, there's so much to say about Pastor Numpty, but this evening, I want to leave you with one of our most favorite scripture. It's in Psalm 100, verse 3. Psalm 100, verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Permit me to read in TPT. It says, and realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping Yahweh our God, for he is our creator and we belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. Without doubt, Pastor Nomti was a woman of God's pleasure and she has returned to the one that has created her. Please join me as one of the proud daughter in the house to salute an undefeated an unresolvable true warrior woman of the most high God that kept true to the assignment of God upon her life sharing her love, her laughter and the word from the Father everywhere she go. Pastor Namti we salute you this evening. We your children rise up and call you blessed. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. That is indeed to an icon and we thank God for her life, a woman that showed deep love for everyone, a woman that went about her, her, the work of the master uh, at every point in time. Father, we give you thanks for such a great life. Amen. Also, uh, as part of the uh, church family, I uh, would like to, Pastor Nomti, a pastor in this church, I'm sure you know, would like to call someone to represent uh, all the Fountain of Life Church pastors, uh, please let's welcome, make welcome bless, Pastor Blessing Awoshika. Excellency, the Vice President of Nigeria, Mr. Governor, our fathers in the house, and this family. I'd like to ask all the pastors to stand. I want us to stand and salute to this great daughter of Jehovah. I want to tell you a story about this church that is called the Fountain of Life Church. And the gift of this man of God, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, a pastor and a father. A man who has specific talent for raising powerful women. The women of Fountain, they're tough, they're strong, they're bold, they're courageous. They can take on whatever the assignment is and they will deliver on it. And that's his gift and his talent. And he taught us well and raised us well and sent us like an army to take on the world. And we always come back victorious. The challenge is when you have a house filled with tough, powerful, smart women and the mother of the house Passes, the one who grew with them, nurturing them. The question you would ask is who can fit into the shoes of a Pastor Bimba Odukoya? Who will have the courage and the audacity to walk into the place of a gifted, powerful woman who walked the earth running with her vision and her assignment? You know how children are when mothers die and their fathers become a widow and they wonder about that stepmother who might just come. So we could have our affairs. But God was merciful to us. In his mercy, he helped our father. A man who cared enough about us to patiently wait 
over a period, a long period of time to hear God and to walk the journey of finding the most perfect fit we could ever ask for as a church. And when he brought her home to us as a new mother to children who lost their mother, she didn't try to be taller than anyone. She did not try to be bigger than anyone. She didn't try to speak over anyone. She didn't try to occupy anybody's space. She never for one minute competed with Pastor Bimbo Odukoya. She came in as an angel with a talent and a gift and the ability to find the space because I bet she had prayed and she asked the Lord to find her her own Rehobot, a place that was perfect for her to fit in. And Fountain turned out to be her Rehobot. And we gained the gift of a mother. Younger than most, but wiser than many. More cheerful than you can imagine. But she brought sunshine to our lives. She lifted the spirit of our father. And she built a house with new learnings that enhanced us. She taught us to laugh. She told us stories as grandmothers used to tell their children stories. If you understood what it was to have tales by moonlight, we had a storyteller in the gift of our angel. Stories we were never part of. Many in Fountain had never been to South Africa. But as you can see, we all became black half caste Nigerians and South Africans. And proudly so, because she told us many stories that made South Africa feel like home. She loved being a Nigerian with everything in her. And we had many moments of laughter, laughing at her trying to be a Yoruba woman, speaking Yoruba to all of us in her funny South African dialect. She was a woman of God in every way you can imagine it. She was a lover of God in every way you can imagine it. She was a giver of love more than you can ever imagine. She served God with every tiny bit. I sit a few seats away from her in church. And when Pastor Namti is worshipping, you will know her entire being is submitted to God. Her entire being, she doesn't play her eyes are closed. She's in agony as she's pouring her heart out to her God. She loved her husband with everything she had. And his children were her children. His grandchildren were her grandchildren. And every single member of this church was hers to nurture and to love. I tried to imagine a song because she loved to sing and to worship. And you know, as I thought about what song will talk about who she is. Yesterday in church, we sang a song. I'd never heard it before. But I called Tolu after and said, Tolu, come. I said, Tolu, please, can you please record the song? They're just six lines. Don't worry. We won't take your time. But she didn't know what I was going to do with it. This morning, I listened to the song over and over again. As much as it spoke my heart and my personal cry to God, I realized how much the song is truly Pastor Namte. It was her heart cry. And though you might wonder, shouldn't we be in pain as a church? We have lost two mothers. Who is asking? Who is our God? Who is in control? This is a house totally and completely submitted to the hands of God. And this is a man that would die serving God. And we vouch for the integrity of our pastor. With everything that we have. Because we know this man. We love this man. And we know that he served God with everything. And we will all die at the feet of God. Serving him with all that we have. Because we know. 
though we do not understand all things God has everything under his control and he's faithful and he's loyal to us and we know that he will keep us as a church we'll sing this song and you will understand that it is truly Pastor Namte oh and he's actually Pastor Nathaniel I didn't, you know me I don't know anything about songs I wasn't there when they were distributing the gift but she will sing it for us thank you Pastor Nathaniel and then take the stage Lord and have your way I'm just a vessel and nothing more and when you're done please take the glory I'm satisfied just to see you glorified take the stage Lord and have your way I'm just a vessel and nothing more and when you're done please take the glory I'm satisfied just to see you glorified Jesus is definitely glorified today as we celebrate his daughter. Thank you very much. To see you glorified. Since this happened, one phrase that pastor has kept saying is God will be glorified. God will be glorified. And the last thing he said in second service after his message, he says, it's not death that matters or life, but God being glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we give you praise. Amen. Let's celebrate the life of Pastor Nomti one more time. You know, she, she would speak the Yoruba. She would want to know what it meant. I was speaking to one of the pastors yes, uh, two days ago and um, there was a song we sang in church at some point and she asked, what does that mean? And the pastor told her, the God made heaven and used it as a duvet. And, and she, she went like, <gasps> hallelujah, amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Just uh, before we continue, um, I just want to acknowledge a, a few more uh, pastors, men of God uh, in the house. I would like to uh, uh, um, <clears throat> recognize Pastor Clem and Marjorie Esomowe from the United Kingdom. Um, that was Pastor Nomti's church in the UK. Hallelujah. Um, I want to also recognize Pastor Zandile from the UK. That's also a good friend. And uh, the representative of the family uh, from South Africa, Miss Nanana. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastors Olusheyi and Omoumi Olusheye. Pastor David Fash. Pastor Taiwo Awoshika. Pastor Tom Duncan. Pastor Tony and Ngozi. Ani for Woshe. God bless you for coming. Uh, we will continue to recognize the other pastors as we go on. Um, right now, we would like to watch a bio of Pastor Nomti. Please watch. Simangele Rosemary Zulu was born on the 30th of May, 1974, in Durban, South Africa. The first child of Madame Busisiwe Zemeth, she came to be known as Nomti after a family friend named her Nomtandazo, meaning woman of prayer. She attended Domino Savite School, an independent Christian school in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands, South Africa. She credited her school with cultivating her lifelong habit of starting every day with a morning devotion. Raised in a deeply committed home, 
Pastor Nomti grew up within a close-knit church community. In 1987, she made a conscious decision to give her life to Christ. Confession, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hey! She attended the Natal College of Education, where she got her higher diploma in education and worked as a teacher in South Africa for eight years. She then moved to London in 2002, where she continued to work as a teacher. She joined Triumphant Church International under the leadership of Pastors Clem and Marjorie Esomawe. A dedicated member of the choir, TCI Shouts of Joy, she rose to become the choir's music director. It was whilst ministering as part of this choir that she was spotted by Pastor Taiwo when he went to London to preach at TCI's Dominion Conference in 2008. They have two sons together, Timmy Lane and Jomi Loju, and six grandchildren through the children from Pastor Taiwo's first marriage, Pastors Tolu, Jimmy and Toby. Pastor Nomti quickly endeared herself to the Fountain of Life Church pastorate and members with her joyful disposition, palpable love of Christ and kindness. In a bid to curb the menace of sexual abuse and molestation of children, Pastor Nomti wrote, No, don't touch me there, one of the best-selling children's books in Nigeria to educate children on how they can protect themselves from abuse. Over the years, she spoke in various schools to children and adults about child protection and donated free copies of her books to students in public schools in Lagos. Testimonies abound of how these books have helped to prevent child abuse. She founded a not-for-profit organization, Fundawazi Foundation, which means learn and know in her native Zulu language. The foundation has been committed to developing and distributing child-friendly resources to educate, equip, and empower children and adults to confront abuse and social ills. Apart from the book, No, Don't Touch Me There, Pastanomti authored several other books for children, as well as two volumes of stories for adults, titled 40 Real Life Lessons and Enjoy Your Life. She published these resources and more via the social enterprise she established called Yazi Wenze Limited, which means know and do in Zulu. Pastanomti was also the inaugural president of the Board of Trustees, Grace Springs Cooperative Multipurpose Society, from June 2012 to April 2017. The cooperative was established to facilitate financial independence as well as investment management and growth by promoting the economic interest of all members, encouraging regular saving habits and providing credit facilities to members at fair and reasonable interest rates for provident and productive purposes. During her tenure, the cooperative grew from 20 people to over 1,200 men and women who have benefited immensely from its various schemes. Pastor Nomti was also the chairperson of Fountain Initiative for Social Development, a faith-based non-profit organization committed to the entrepreneurial development and empowerment of underprivileged individuals and communities across Nigeria. She was also the head of Home Affairs, the Married Women's Fellowship of the Fountain of Life Church, and Fine Wine, a mature singles fellowship for people over 40. Pastor Nomti became known for her catchphrase, enjoy your life, as she constantly encouraged people to enjoy their lives regardless of their circumstances. She was fondly nicknamed the President of Enjoy Your Life Incorporated, as she set about spreading the message of enjoying one's life in Christ Jesus to the nations. In her lifetime, she spoke at various platforms across Africa, Europe and North and South America. On the 9th of November 2021, after a bravely fought battle with cancer, Pastor Nomti transitioned to glory, having inspired those around her with her unwavering faith and commitment to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, even in the face of illness. We will sorely miss Pastor Nomti, but hallelujah, no go finish for our mouths. Thank you so much. Um, 
Pastor Nomti also had these things with children and would like you to listen to a short conversation uh, Pastor Nomti had with a nine-year-old. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Faye. Happy birthday to you. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. I love you, Faye. A very happy birthday to you. I pray. I pray for God's peace to always be upon you. The joy of the Lord to continually be your strength in the name of Jesus. I say you are more knowledgeable than your peers, than your teachers in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, you will stand out in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers you, Faye. You will always be different because you have the Holy Ghost in on the inside of you. And he will always help you in everything and anything that you need in life. The Holy Ghost will help you achieve great things in your life in the name of of Jesus. I pray that you have a beautiful day today. I love you so, so, so much. Thank you for loving me. <laughs> Hello, Pastor Nancy. I would like to say thank you for what you did. Don't worry, I'll send cake to you. I pray that you have a good day too. Bye. Okay. I love you. Hallelujah. And Pastor Nancy will always stop to acknowledge a child. It's so, such, it was such an amazing and a wonderful life. I'm sure from all those pictures, Paktinomti was always smiling. She was always cheerful. And she brought a lot of cheerfulness into this, uh, into this house. God bless you, Paktinomti. Indeed, we will miss you. Uh, just um, a recognition of a few more pastors. Uh, Pastor Mfon Demudia, Pastor Yemi Akinsoya. Pastor Edna Essien, Pastor and uh, Mrs. Eboda, uh, Pastor Beatrice and Fumilayo, Pastor Uchena Unwosu. Thank you for coming. At this time, we would like to uh, welcome uh, to the stage um, Gloria. She has a special song to sing. Let's encourage her as she comes up stage. Good evening, Pastor Taiwo. Good evening, Pastor Fountain of Life Church. It is an honor to stand here today to declare that regardless of what has happened, that Jesus is here. Can you lift your hand and say, Jesus is here? We're going to declare this over this ministry tonight. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Oh, I know. That Jesus is here Singing over this church Oh, I know That Jesus is here Declare it over this ministry Oh, I know That Jesus is here Jesus is here Oh, I know, sing Oh, I know That Jesus is here Jesus Lift your hands Sing it into the future Oh, I know Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Sing it over this family. Oh, I know that Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Sing it over this ministry. Oh, I know. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Oh, I know that Jesus is here. And I can see His power. I can see. His power, His power, His power in me. I know Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Say, I can see His power. I can see. 
in 2019 I had a heavenly encounter I actually went to heaven and I actually saw the beauty and the glory of heaven and I heard the angel sing this song it simply said holy holy are you Lord hallelujah hallelujah holy holy are you Lord I called Pastor Nomti. I said Pastor Nomti because when I when I heard this song, I actually heard the angels singing Yoruba, Mimo Mimo Lolua, and it was like in every language I heard the song. I said Pastor Nomti, please can you teach me what would it be like to sing this song in Zulu? I said Ah, Gloria. It says Ngwele, Ngwele, Wena, Ngosi. Can everybody say Ngwele, Wena, Ngosi, Ngwele, Wena, Ngosi. I want to believe she's singing this song right now in Zulu. Can we do that together? Hey. voice and sing the song now it goes like this Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest the angels are singing Hosanna in the highest hey. Hosanna in the highest hey. Hosanna. Hosanna in the the angels, the angels are singing Hosanna, Hosanna. much for that indeed it occurred to me you know Pastor Nomti loved the song hallelujah no go finish for her mouth uh, she would sing it every Sunday hallelujah and it just occurred to me that even though you stop singing hallelujah here you join the heavenly host singing hallelujah which means hallelujah will actually never finish from your mouth. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we magnify your holy name. Thank you for who you are. Amen. Um, just before we go on, just like to recognize a few more pastors. Uh, Pastor Adama and Pastor Zama, God bless you. From the UK, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us at this time. Uh, Pastor Zandile and Ntombela. Hallelujah. 
Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Those are South African friends. We also like to recognize Pastor Idowu Iloyomade. Hallelujah, Pastor Tola Odutola. Thank you for coming. Pastor Matea Ambolanle Oko, thank you for coming. God bless you. Um, Pastor Debo Adedeji, Pastors Kingsley and Mildred Okonkwa, and Pastor and Mrs. Tella. Hallelujah. Um, the second Bible reading will be taken by Jomiloju Odukoya. Let's encourage Jomiloju. Let's put our hands together for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Choir, please get ready. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jamiloju Dukoya. I will be taking the second Bible reading for the evening. It will be taken from John 14, verses 1 to 3 in the New King James, James Version. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's where I am, there you may be also. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jamiloju. Thank you, Jamiloju. Hallelujah. Amen. Could we please rise up for the next hymn? We have an uncle to be led by the Grace Levites.
Thank you, Grace Levites. Hallelujah. Um, please, uh, okay, stay on the stage. Uh, you'll be coming up shortly again. Uh, but just before they come up again, there is something that happens in this church every Sunday, and that is the promise. Um, God gives us a word every week, and with that word, we war, we, we you know, do everything during the week. So, for instance, this week, the promise for the week uh, is First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And Pastor Nomti would usually take that promise. And um, in taking that promise, you know, the angle she would come with those uh, promises, teaching those promises were way ahead. But so was so lovely. Uh, this is where she told us stories. And, you know, at the end, you felt encouraged. You felt inspired. You felt, wow, this is what the Word of God was saying. She taught the Word of God in a very, very, very different and unique way. And we'd like you to watch Pastor Nomti, the woman of promises. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning, honorable fountainers. How are you all doing this morning? We are enjoying our life. Amen. I'm enjoying mine too. It's good to enjoy your life. There's no joy without the word of God. That's why we have this promise, our promise for this week. We have our promise for this year, our very first promise for this year. Our promise for this week, our promise for this week, our promise for this week, Matthew 6, verses 25 to 26. I think that this verse is telling us to enjoy our lives. This is what he says. If, if you don't know where it is in the Bible, there are many other places where God says, the joy of the Lord is our strength and our, he, he wishes that our joy will be full. But if you don't know any, anywhere else, this week, if you are quoting the scripture, just say, I'm enjoying my life. I'll say it with pride. I'm enjoying my life. And I will continue to enjoy my life till Jesus comes. When water wants to overflow you, when the rivers want to overflow you, God steps in. Because it's a life God. If you felt like you were barren, you are no longer barren because with God, it is possible to have children. But some people say, I don't trouble God. No, I will trouble him. Because he said in Psalm 46, he is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in trouble. When I have trouble, I have somebody I can trouble with my trouble. It is God who created me to be excited anyway, that way that I get excited. I'm glad that he did. But I will not stop until everybody around me is excited as well. Because there are testimonies that follow joy. And I want you to prove that God is faithful by saying it in the atmosphere. That hallelujah, no go finish for your mouth. I love you all and thank you for your love. I feel your love, your prayers, wherever I am, even when I'm not with you here. Everybody in life wants to feel accepted. If you can give anybody a gift, give them that gift of accepting them. Everybody, every single person, from the president to the smallest member of any nation and I'm so grateful that the Fountain of Life Church has welcomed me, accepted me day in and day out. You did not only accept me when I came but you keep accepting me just like Jesus who keep loving him every day. You people of God are true believers. I think we can make that louder. We can make that louder. I think we can make it louder, louder, and louder, and louder. The word of God in her mouth was just creative. It took on a new dimension. And we were blessed uh, that she shared that part of her life with us. Thank you, Pastor Nomti, for giving. I'll now invite again the Grace Levites for a special Zulu package.
glory, glory to the Lord. Oh, look what our God can be called our Father. No other God can be called a friend. No other God can be called Redeemer. No other God is coming back again. How we love, oh how we love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. Oh how we love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one.
Thank you, Grace Levites. Um, I'd like to recognize the presence of Pastor and Mrs. Babalola, Pastor and Mrs. Muiwa Maku, Reverend Rugby, um, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, Bishop and Mrs. Macanto, uh, thank you for coming. Pastor Akintola Oni, Pastor Chris Ikebua, Pastor Kunle Koka, Reverend Chris Ogo, uh, Reverend Michael and Mrs. Eden Oloyede, Pastor David Amosu, uh, Pastor Sunday and Bumi Babalola, I think I've recognized them. Um, Reverend Omololu, thank you for coming. Uh, Pastors Ike and Joyce Iboko and Pastors Lucy uh, and Anthony Oko. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Uh, the next Bible reading is going to be taken by Pastor Jimmy Odukoya. Good evening. This Bible reading is taken from the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 31 to 39. And it reads, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how would he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, none than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus our lord May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Nothing indeed will separate us from the love of God. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the night of tributes for our dearly beloved Pastor Nomti Odukoya. Like I mentioned earlier, Pastor Nomti represented, meant so many things to very many different people. We've heard from her church community, school community. She also had friends, and we would like to hear from her friends now. I'd like to start this by calling on Pastor Zama. Let's encourage her, please. Good evening, everyone. A friend indeed, Namti was. So many years we spent together. One thing for sure, she is a Christian. She loved God with all her heart. Like everybody said, not a single negative thing she'll say about somebody. She will turn the situation around by the word of God. We loved her so much. The last two years, we spent praying with her 
every week, every day. The last few days of her life, we were video calling her. Every time we declared the word of God, there was not a single time she would not say amen. She took the word of God as it was, never doubted God, never doubted that God would not heal her. She believed till the very last breath. She believed that God is able. She believed that God can do it. She believed that God could turn it around. God decided to turn it around this way. You know, yesterday I was just thinking about her life. How she started as a flower and blossomed straight away. She blossomed and God knew she had to run her race. And she finished it. It is painful for us, but she ran and she finished it. And she finished it well. Never, even on the day she was in so much pain, would she utter that, you know, God doesn't love me. She believed God loved her with all that was within her. She believed she, that God can do it. Therefore, we stand here as her friends. Pastor Tayo, thank you. Thank you, Fountain of Life, for welcoming Pastor Nomti the way she did. She became more Nigerian than South African. She spoke of the culture so well. She loved Nigerian people. She believed in Nigerian people. You know, one of the things I wrote about her, she, she was not afraid to tackle difficult situations in life. She was not afraid to tackle the things that nobody wants to speak about. But she spoke her heart. She wrote the books about it. She poured her heart out. And I believe where she is now, she's wearing her crown. Everybody else who has celebrated her life, everybody else who has prayed for her, you know, we believe, we know that she's in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. She loved dancing. That is her legacy. She loved every time we prayed, no go, hallelujah, no go finish in my mouth was her favorite song. You know, no matter what, she turned it around. I just want to thank everyone who took part in her care and her love, especially the last two years of her life. Uh, those who poured out their resources, who poured out their love, who poured out their prayers and prayed for her because those prayers sustained her till the end. She is a woman who fought. I've never seen anybody have so much faith that the person who's going through a situation is the person who's encouraging those who are watching her. She had so much faith in God. She, it was unshakable, unshakable faith. But she loved every time we were together. She loved laughing. She is one of my daughter's um, uh, godmother. And when we told them about her, they were so you know, so down. But one thing I remember well, during her days in London just recently, um, my daughters would, would put a song, a, a praise song, and do gymnastics for her and, and dance with her. And she would praise, her, praise them all the way, praise them all the ways. Therefore, with this one thing, I just want to leave you all that, you know, we love Tim Tim, we love Jom Jom, we love all the extended family. You've now become our family because of our friend Nom T. We love you so much and may her spirit of joy um, continue to resonate in your hearts. Be encouraged because she was such a loving person. I have no doubt that she's in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. She came into our lives. They've been part of our conferences for the last three years in, in London and the Every member of our church was almost in tears when we told them about it. But as friends, we kept it to ourselves. It was our conversation with God that we were praying for her. We wanted to tell them a testimony that God can heal. And yes, this is a testimony that somebody can hold on to the word of God to the last, to the last, till the last. No matter the situation, she can hold on to the word of God till the last. And this for us is our legacy. This is for us what we have seen will challenge us and should challenge all of us to run the race, like Pastor, say, Pastor Tayo said yesterday, to run the race that is set before us with endurance because there is a crown.
down, waiting for one and every one of us. Let's serve God. Let's love God. Let's hold on to the word till the end. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Zama. Pastor Nomti learned how to komole in Nigeria. And she would tell us, oh yeah, komole, komole. Well, if you don't understand what komole is, ask your neighbor. I've just spoken Greek. All right. Um, Pastor Sumbo Adioye. Hallelujah. I'd like to stand on all existing protocols. It's such a huge honor to be asked to speak about my queen mother, my pastor Namti Odukoya. She was my best friend. She was my mentor extraordinary. I remembered as a young pastor's wife, I needed someone who had walked that path to mentor me on that journey. And so I sent her a message that I would like to meet with her. And Pastor Nomti obliged me. She opened up our doors to me. When I was going through my waiting season, my husband had waited for the fruit of the womb for 21 years. While I was walking the journey of several miscarriages, Pastor Nomti would pray with me. And when God eventually gave us our miracle, it was also Pastor Nomti's testimony. She named our son Stembiso, which means a child of promise. I remember having David in America and Pastor Nomti flew in. She flew in all the way and came to nurture David with me in the United States. That for me was a selfless act. Pastor Nomti can be summarized as a genuine Christian. Our love for God, our love for people, our love for children, both old and young, is not determined by how much money you have dropped as a seed. Our love for me, she's always looking out for other people. I was reading Corinthians chapter 1 verse 13 to, um, from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4 to 8. And that rightly speaks about who Pastor Nomti is. Pastor Nomti is patient. Pastor Nomti is kind. My queen mother does not envy. She doesn't boast. Pastor Nomti Odukoya is not proud. She doesn't dishonor others. Pastor Nomti is not self-seeking. And she is never easily angered. I remembered one day she called me and someone had just stolen from me and I caught the person. She could sense the anger in my voice and she asked me, Sumba, what's going on? I told her that someone close had just stolen from me. To my surprise, my queen mother said, then buy her our own. That was a very huge deliverance for me as I started to laugh. I just, I'm like, what manner of wisdom is this? Pastor Nomti is a woman of wisdom. My queen mother would make, I don't know, she makes example of seemingly small things. Last week Sunday, the church organized the surprise 40th birthday for me. And in our usual way, I would have called her to gist her about the experience. And so I sat there in my room. And I imagined gisting with my pastor, Nomti Odukoya. And I imagined what she would have said to me. And I started to laugh. I imagined her right now in heaven, walking the streets of gold, in her clogged heels and her well-polished nails never to be caught on fresh, taking selfies of all the beautiful glimpses and probably wondering how she can send the details to us in seemingly small ways. Please help me celebrate my queen mother. Make it louder.
I call her my Saudi Niger queen. Pastor Nomti loved the Yoruba language. Every time we speak, she will say, Eka Leo. She will say, Oda Aro. She was so proud of the Nigerian heritage. Pastor Nomti named my second daughter after her, Nomti Dazo. She said that our name means a woman of prayer. She's always excited about their milestone. When Sparkle started to walk, I sent her a video of Sparkle walking, and she was so excited. She was, I mean, my vision is our vision. Pastor Nomti is so selfless that she would share our contacts with me. I remember every year I would come and share my vision for the following year with her. And then together we would sit and talk about it. She's always interested in every detail. She wants to know who is going to be speaking. If I do not have a speaker, she checks her contacts and gives me a great speaker. And if she's not even present at the conference, she ensures to watch online and gives me feedback. I don't know if anyone has ever experienced love and blessing the way Pastor Nomsi has showered it to me. When I count my blessing, I count Pastor Nomsi Odukoya twice. And I don't fail to show her off. She is a blessing and a great blessing to me. She is a great blessing to the Inspiring Change tribe. She is a great blessing to my home church, Royalty Christian Center. She named me after her own mother. She named me Busesiwe. Queen Mother, I love you with the whole of my heart. Pastor, thank you for loving her the way you do. I mean, I can stand here and talk about my Queen Mother, but I'm so excited because I know that she is enjoying her crown. I know that wherever she is, she is happy. I remembered some time ago, she had a cough, and she, the cough gave her an husky voice, and she needed to speak. I remembered her standing to speak, and just making humor out of what was pain to her. She said, God has decided to give me a unique voice. And we all laughed. Nobody knew what she was going through. In September, Pastor Nomti called me. I didn't pick the call because I was busy. When I called her back, she couldn't pick. So she sent me a text message. That she was just checking up on me because she knows I'm going to be turning 40 very soon. I said to her, I said, Queen Mother, I'm going to wait for you. She said, no, do not wait because I do not know where I will be then. And, and so I replied and I said, I don't know whether to cry or to keep praying. And she said, just keep praying. On Monday, I turned 40 and she wasn't there like she predicted. But we are praying and an hallelujah will not finish for our mouths in Jesus' name. Please help me celebrate my own queen mother, Pastor Nomti Odukoye, my Saudi Niger princess, a genuine Christian to the core, a lover of God and a lover of children, a selfless kingdom giant. When we call you a general, it's because you have scars, you have battles, you have won. She is a general indeed. Please help me celebrate. Pastor Namsi Odukoya, may our gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sumo. Next, I'll call Ms. Jumoke Salami. Let's encourage her. Good evening, church. I would like to read my tribute. Uh, I am hurting. This one is painful. My sister, my friend, my pastor Numti, writing this tribute feels unreal, more so having to read it now. My sis, as we fondly called ourselves, in the way we meant literally, and not as a spiritual term, came into my life and brought nothing but pure joy. I still remember the day we met clearly. Pastor had called and said, Olajumoke, 
I've met someone very special. She will be visiting Nigeria, and before I introduce her to the church, I would like you to meet her and be her friend. I wasn't sure I would like you, and I told Pastor, friendship cannot be forced. And he said, I have prayed you would like her, and he was right. Immediately we met, your smile was huge, your eyes beamed with joy, and hands outstretched. We hugged like long lost friends. Lunch lasted until we had dinner, and that was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. My sis, he came to marry not just pastor, but his people, his culture, his nation. You actually had the biblical depiction of roots. You loved this immediate and extended family. Only you could have been destined for this role, sis. You loved this nation and was very proud of being a Ninja wife. You even had a Yoruba teacher taking lessons to speak and understand the language. I remember telling you that you've become more Yoruba than me with your gaily and native attires. We had too many conversations around the subject matter in Nigeria and you were always praying for her. I recall you calling to remind me to go vote in the elections because you cared that much. My sis, no one else could have fit like a glove into church like you did, bringing joy and harmony. You made everyone feel welcomed, heard, and seen. My sister, when I think of who a Christian is, you will always come to mind. You simplified it. You exemplified it. You are reachable and relatable. Being a Christian was your happy place. Humor could be seen in everything you did or message you shared. I remember telling you I would become Team Team and Jum Jum's manager, as most of your teachings came from things they had done or said, and you should start paying them. My sis was an excellent mother and loved being a grandma, and might I say she was the best Google. How I would miss our inside jokes and the teasing of how you've converted pastor to watching your favorite South African shows. Not to mention I was forced to watch when I came visiting. I miss you so much, sis. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for being you. Simple, kind, thoughtful, non-judgmental. Thank you for lighting up every room with your smile. Thank you for your contagious laughter. Thank you for your many acts of service. I remember you showed up at my home with shown when I couldn't be reached at the time that I was hurting, because that's what sisters do. <sighs> Through the pain of cancer, you were graceful. You were still concerned about the well-being of others, especially pastor, whenever we chatted or talked. That was the selflessness with which you lived. I don't know how it's going to be for me without you being a call, a drive, or a text away, but without a doubt, I know that joy will come in the morning and we'll laugh again. <laughs> Definitely not tomorrow because my heart is so broken. We will dance again because that is what my sister would have wanted. <sighs> May we live our lives in the light of the love of Jesus that she freely gave, the smiles that we basked in and in the warmth of our affection. I love you, sis. I will always love you. <laughs> Rest now, and the Lord you wholeheartedly loved and served. Thank you, Jumoke. Thank you for that. I'd like to call next Orianda Uyilofor. Orianda. Was Orianda? All right.
Good evening, church. All protocols observed. I stand on an existing protocol. Um, Pastor Nomti, like they've said, was so many different things to different people. She was a woman that loved with her whole heart. She came, she saw, and she conquered. She was a true Christian. In fact, it feels like I have to repeat what everybody has said because these are the things that I wanted to say, which is that Pasanumti was a giver. Her heart was open. Her heart was open to everyone around her. When I met her, when she came newly, we just clicked, we became great friends. She would always welcome me in her home with joy and excitement. She was always full of excitement. She was always giving. Not once did I hear her say one bad word about anyone. She was always encouraging me. When I had challenges, she would always call. And one thing I noticed about her, which everybody has said, is that she loved children greatly. Never did Pasanumti call me and not ask after my children. Even if I failed to mention them, she would always say, how is um, Ozora, how is Emanuela? You know, she was always full of love, always giving, always um, wanting to please. Not in a bad way, but you know, she always desired to please, to make the other person happy. I give God the glory for her life. I think, I would like to thank Pastor Taiwo for being the kind of husband he was to her. Pastor Tayo was very encouraging to Pastor Nomti. He stood by her, he propped her when she needed it, and she shone through like a diamond. We enjoyed her, and I know that the legacy she has left behind through her children, her teachings, particularly her books that she has written that will bless future generations, will bless the children now and even in the future. We thank God for her life. We'll continue to glorify God. And I pray that her children will grow and be strong. God will continue to hide them under the shade of his wing. And um, we'll, the church will never forget Pastor Numti. Her mantra of enjoying your life continually rings in our ears. And I know that um, a lot of people will always sing Hallelujah, no go finish for our mouth. We thank God for her. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Indeed, we can never forget her. Her footprints have been cemented in time. Um, anyone who passes through will see um, how she gave uh, with all our hearts and with uh, everything she had. Um, at this moment, I'd like to invite um, to the stage uh, Pastor Tolu Odukoya Ijogun uh, for a special song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last couple of weeks have been a tough one, and I'd like to just sing my meditation.
like no other Strength like no other Reaching to me You are my peace Yes, you are Peace like no other Peace like no other Reaching to me You are my hope Hope like no other Hope like no other Reaching to me You are my strength Yes you are Strength like no other Strength like no other Oh, reaching to me In the fullness of your grace In the power of your name You lift me up You lift me up in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me up. You lift me Jesus Christ, I 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Shout. Shout hallelujah. Amen. I can tell you Pastor Nomti really loved that song. Thank you Pastor Tolu for doing such a good job. That entered. Hallelujah. It got deep into our spirit. Ministered to us. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Um, there's, there's a short clip that would come up now because it's tributes to our dearly beloved Pastor Nomti Odukoya. And um, after God, there was one person she loved so much. She never failed to declare her love for this person. There are some things he made this person do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please watch. I am married. I am happy. I am glad. She's a wonderful woman. So I'm enjoying the best of two worlds in one woman. She's pretty, she's fine, and she's born again. Somebody is wearing a special dress today. And it fits specially too. And the person is glamorous, anointed. And the person is a special blessing. Hallelujah. Particularly to Pastor Taiwo. A blessing to the Fountain of Life Church. A blessing to a generation. A blessing to humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, help me celebrate Pastor Nomti Odukoya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Taiwo, for sharing Pastor Nomti with us. Um, right about now, we would like to uh, hear the tributes from family members. One thing that has, I have seen here today is that the tributes have been quite consistent. She's a Christian. She's a lover. She's a giver. Everybody has had lovely, wonderful things to say about her. It tells us that everything we do, what kind of mark are we leaving in the lives of other people? I'd like to call Pastor Zandili. Pastor Zandili. Please let's appreciate her. Greetings, church. All protocol observed. Um, I'm here to, to say thank you to the Lord for the journey we've had with Pastor Numti. I call him Zala. Um, in English, it's cousin. Because she shared... Uh, my mom's maiden name. We met in London. We were both from South Africa. But it was good that God made sure that we meet. Uh, we met in London and we, we just connected. Such a lovely soul. And, and one of the things that I'm encouraged and I'm, I'm really grateful to God for a friend and a sister like Pastor Numti. Um, actually, she introduced me to Nigeria. The first time we came here, it was for her 40th birthday. And it was um, sour this time coming here. 
to know that I'm going to say goodbye. And goodbyes, I'm, I'm not good in saying goodbyes. I always disappear. And definitely I won't board a flight to come and say goodbye. But this was compelling. Um, Pastor Namti tried to introduce me to Nigerian culture. I can gladly say that I can make pepper soup. And one time, I, they, they came to London with, with Pasta and, and the kids. And I said, I was trying to impress her because someone told me how to make pepper soup. I said, I made pepper soup for you. She smiled and we ate after dinner. She said, Mzala, that was nice, but it's not pepper soup. <laughs> so you still have to teach me how to make pepper soup. Um, I've been with her on a, on a long journey as a single person. One thing that she does, she does everything with her whole heart. When she was a single, I've worked with her as a single person. One thing she wanted was to marry a godly man. And she served God as a single person wholeheartedly. When she got married, she served as a married woman wholeheartedly and served her husband and, and children and the family. You know, sometimes we think of cross-culture, we're all from Africa, but there are differences, but she really embraced Nigerian culture. I thank God also for the last two years. Um, The good things and not so good that happened over the past two years. But I'm here to say, I think it was Tolu who wrote, Pastor Tolu wrote, that cancer didn't win. And it didn't. I stayed with, with Nomti when she was going through a difficult time. But a smile on the face. We'll wake up in the morning. I'll come in to give her hot water because she wanted to drink hot water and with a beam and a smile on her face, when everything else was suggesting that she should have a sour face, but she wasn't. And she trusted God. She prayed till the end, and she was standing on faith. And if I was to summarize her, I would say, go and open your Bibles in Proverbs 31. She is such a woman of a noble character. Everything she did, she did. She paid attention. You know that she has got so many friends. And she will make sure that every friend, you feel like you're the only one. I thought I was the closest. Now I'm listening to people thinking, thinking, how did she make, how did she do that? Ensuring that everyone, when she's paying attention to you, it's everything. Last night I shared that one, one girl from our church who, who's five accepted Christ. And she wanted her parents to send a clip to say, Pastor, I have prayed a prayer and I gave my life to Christ. I'm with Pastor Nonti and I'm showing her this. And then later on, she came from her bedroom and she said, Mzala, what are we going to do with Mzalwane Tandi? This girl, her name is Tandi. Mzalwane is a, a Zulu um, word for a believer. And she bought her a new Bible. So Tandi's first Bible, she'll never meet Tandi in this life. But she gave her the word of God, the Bible. She impacted, how much time have you got? She impacted individuals and people in groups alike. And you're like, how? How do you pay attention to minor, to, to, to junior, to adults, and to crowd, and to pastors? She was such a gift. And if I was to talk on behalf of the Zulu family, they have lost 
an amazing daughter. And we lost, I lost a friend and a sister. We prayed with her, as Pastor Zam was saying, over the past two years, and we believe God, we trust. We trusted and we claimed her healing, and she stood in the word of God. But on my, on my writing, Ella, I said, perhaps our calendars clashed. God's calendar was saying something else. She made cancer look stupid. We went with her to, 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 to a London clinic. She, as she's sort of bubbling, she's walking around, and everyone loved her there. And she won't look like a person who's unwell, and she maintained that positive spirit till the end. One time, I like shaving my hair. One time, I shaved my hair. And we decided to go to, to the clinic without a wig. I didn't put the wig on. And I said, uh, I'll, I'll tell you now, we were talking about how people prejudge. That I will, I will walk in first. Actually, she was walking first. But I said, the attention is going to be given to me because they will think I'm the one who's a patient. And we laughed about that because the attention I was getting, they thought it was me. And I say, ma'am, where are you going? Which section are you going? And it was her. We, we made jokes out of difficult things t at times. And she, lastly, she was a strong woman. She would sing goodnight songs to Tim and Jom Jom in the evening. And I didn't know how she would do that. Sometimes the treatment won't be as positive, And she'll come back tired and she'll go to bed. But in the evening, without fail, she will ring her husband and speak to the children and sing. And at times I'll go because I'm weak. I cry over anything. I will go to the kitchen and just weep, thinking, Lord, how, 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 how is she coping with this? But she maintained that positive spirit even till the end. The last video calls... She was still saying, we, pray, we were praying, and she was still saying, I believe God. In our group, in, as, as, as friends, we, I don't know how this joke came about, but you have to earn a status of being lady number one. So every week, you'll have to log in early, and, and you, you're classed as lady number one because you're keeping time, you're doing everything right. And today... As I say goodbye, I say, Mzala, you are the lady number one because you died in faith. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Pastor Toby Udukoya in Noha and Pastor Kemi Udukoya. Good evening, church. We're standing on all the existing protocols. At times like this, I think about the beginning. We all know the beginning, because we've heard it a number of times. But I was there. And I was there with my dad for the ministration, but I didn't see what he saw on the stage, because I wasn't the one that was finding a wife. But I laughed recently, because I remember that after the service at home, my dad really gently, very softly, was like, Toby, did you see that woman on the stage that was singing in the choir? And I was like, ah, Dad, I, I'm not sure I saw you. He was like, hmm. It's like, okay, and the rest is history. We know the rest. When my mom died, we wanted a companion for my dad because I was the youngest, I was 15, but I was going to college. My dad was gonna be by himself. And all our lives, we had known my dad as a teen. We didn't want him to be alone. And truly, my dad and Auntie Nomti, they were each other's companions. I didn't live in Nigeria, but every time I came home, it was very interesting to watch how their dynamics was growing and blossoming and changing. 
they would get at each other if one person started the South African TV show that they loved and the other one wasn't there. Say, Mr. T, I was waiting for you, but I was downstairs with the guest now. Should I give me five more minutes? I would laugh and smile. They would tease each other. She always teased my dad for being a home buddy because my dad thought that the best place you can have quality time is at home. No need to go out. And Auntie Nomsi loved to go out. And my dad is a romantic man, but you know, Auntie Nomsi wanted a little bit of oomph, so she used to tease him about that as well. And although it was a joke, my dad listened. Because after that, he was either calling Kemi or myself or my sister to surprise Auntie Nom on Valentine's Day or her birthday. And then I would call on FaceTime and she'd say, Toby, see what Mr. T bought me. And he, she would show me flowers, and I would say, da day, da day. That's my daddy. And even when she was in London, before she knew she needed something, my dad would have called me and told me, Toby, please, I need you to go and meet Pastor Nomti and do this and that and that and that. And even after I had done it, my dad would be thanking me. Thank you so much, Toby. Thank you so much. Thank you. I said, but daddy, you don't have to thank me. Of course I would do it. But it was because he loved her and she loved him. And it was very evident for anyone that saw them or were together with them. And I want to say to Tim Tim and Jum Jum that your mom loved you so much. She celebrated all your milestones, all your achievements. I knew when Tim Tim became a prefect. Oh, Auntie Numpty was so excited. I knew when Jum Jum got first prize for different subjects in school because Auntie Numpty would share every video with me. I knew when they sang in the Christmas carol and Numpty would say, see, that's Jum Jum over there and that's Tim Tim over there. Your mom loved you so much and she talked about you all the time. And she celebrated us too, my sister and my brother. When we came back home from my wedding in September, nobody knew what was going on. But Numpty was still having treatments at the time. And at the time, there was this song that was raining. And although I'm young, I'm finding it hard to keep up with all the dances now. And so we were talking about the song. And I said to her, you know, it's actually a Christian song. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And then she started to show me the Vosha dance. You know, she said, you do this, you go down, you turn around. And we were just joking. And then when I danced in on my wedding day, Auntie Lara and Pastor Nomti were there in the front. And I was dancing in and I looked at Auntie Nom and she signaled to me, she said, Toby, do the voice show, do the voice show. And then I was, ah, 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 ah. And I just saw Auntie Nomti like, ah. And she was so happy, so happy. And if you look at my wedding pictures, all you see is Auntie Nomti and myself dancing because that was who she was. I thank her for the stories. The stories were always amazing. <laughs> I thank her for the laughter. I love to gist with Auntie Nome. Anybody that was close to Auntie Nome knows that Auntie Nome was a good gisting partner. But in the gist, there was always Jesus. Or she will bring it back. And you'll be going this way and say, and then you know what Jesus is? And they're like, okay. As a family, from myself, Tola and Jimmy, Auntie Nome, we love you. Thank you for the amazing 12 years that you had with my dad. We loved to see the smile on my dad's face. We weren't so worried about my dad when Auntie Nom was allowed. And rest in peace, Auntie Nom. Like Pastor Nomti, I moved from London to Lagos to marry into the Ojukoya family. And she welcomed me specially. As she'd gone ahead, we were both newly minted Lagosians together. And that made us bond very quickly. I say she welcomed me specially, but actually she extended that welcome to Olumide and Oluchi as well. She was a welcoming woman. As, people, as many people have said already, she was a true Christian. And she loved people. I used to call her Auntie Mama, and she called me Jomiloju, nicknames that we got from Timulei when he was two years old. My auntie mama was authentic. She was herself and you could be free with her. 
What you saw of her standing on this pulpit was who she was in every aspect of her life. She truly believed in enjoy your life. That's who she was, and she lived that every single day. She was a giver. And as I said, she loved people. She loved having people around her. Last week, as I was tidying my room, something struck me. I realized that, I mean, she, she gave me many things, but I realized that I had many of her pajamas in my closet. Why? Because sometimes the children and I, when, you know, we go and visit Pastor and Pastor Nanti. If it's getting late, because we always have fun, as Toby said, she's a gister. So even if you plan to go for two hours, two turns into four, four hours turns into six, and you find you're still there, and of course, daddy's very protective, so he'll say, it's getting late. You know, I, I'm not sure if you guys will still go home today, and Pastor Nanti will say, stay, great, stay. And <laughs> I'd say, but we don't have anything, I didn't prepare. She, I've got pajamas, what do you need? Stay. She loved having people around her. Um, last year, October, we, we ended up spending a few days with Dad and Asinom. Um, there was a curfew, and so because of that, we, we, we stayed with them for a few days. And we hadn't planned it. We'd only planned to go for the day, but we ended up, I think, spending four or five days, and we were having the best time. But at the time, my son was still in nappies, and um, we ran out on, I think, day two or day three. And we ended up using sanitary towels <laughs> instead of nappies. And um, so when, when it was time and we could go home, I said, okay, we've got to go now because we need to, you know, we've got, we need our supplies. Azariah needs his diapers. And she said, no, we've been having too much fun. You guys have to stay another week. And I said, but Azariah is using sanitary towels. She said, only because of that. That's the only reason you're leaving. You know, she just loved, loved, loved having people around her. She loved the house to be full of people. She welcomed people into her home, not just me. You know, my Kun, everyone, you know, everyone was welcome. She just loved the house to be full of people, of laughter, of joy. She was a joy bringer, a joy giver. As I said, enjoy your life was who she was. As um, I think Pastor Zandi said, you know, during her battle with cancer, she didn't stop enjoying her life. I, I traveled with her last year, and when we got to the hospital, they asked us, who's the patient and who's the companion? Because there was no, you know, there was no telling on her because she continued to live her life to the full, to the fullest in Christ. She continued to carry the joy of Christ wherever she was. And all the other patients loved her as well because, you know, when you're, when you're facing a battle, when you're battling cancer, you're not thinking about looking good and, you know, and how you present. But so everyone else would go down to the dining hall, just, you know, slacks and T-shirts, but she'd be dressed in beautiful colors. And they'd say, wow, you're amazing. You know, they, they were just so amazed by this woman that was facing the battle they were facing but she had a whole different outlook to the way she faced it. Because everything about her was Jesus. Uh, in her last week before she passed, one of the things she said to me was, Kem Kem, I'll see heaven. And I said, yeah, but Auntie Mama, we'll all see heaven. You know, you don't have to see. We're not gonna see heaven now. And she just smiled and she said, I'll see heaven. And it made me think of Colossians 3, verses 1 to 4. Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Pasanamti set her sights on the realities of heaven. She thought of the things of heaven. So even though it's hard for me to imagine myself navigating life and Lagos and Nigeria without her, when I think of her sharing in his glory, I'm encouraged. 
And I just want everyone to be encouraged by the life that she lived. Hallelujah did not finish for her mouth. We love you. And to know we love you forever. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Toby and Pastor Kemi. Final tribute for the day would be from Timilei and Jomiluju Otukoya. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. Good evening, church, once again. My name is Timeline Odukoya, and I just want to talk about how amazing my mom was. She actually, when she was in America receiving treatment, woke up at 3 a.m. to watch my year six um, final assembly so that she could view me graduating. And even she, she, I didn't even know she had cancer at times because she just looked like a very, very happy woman, very joyful woman. Everything about her was positive. I, even when she was disciplining us, she told me, Tim Tim, I'm this, Tim Tim, I still love you no matter what you do, I still love you. And even when I'd be silly at times, she still, she still express how much she loves us. So there was nothing that she would do that, that I would do that would make her not love me. She was like, I'd tell her that she was the best mom in the world and I, I honestly meant that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, church, once again. My name is Jamilo Joe Dukoya, and I'd always love it when you were still during the lockdown, when she was still in the UK, but every time she'd wake up as early as 5 o'clock a.m. so that she could see the accolades assembly, and afterwards, she'd call and she'd be so excited about how, about how good I've, I had done. And every, and every night, even when she was in the U, U.S., she'd call just so she could sing the good night song to me and my brother. And I loved her very much. And she always managed to bring a smile to my face, even when I was angry or upset. And I, yeah, and she was the best mom in the world. Thank you. Let's keep clapping for them. That took a lot of strength and a lot of courage to do. God bless you, Timilei and Jomiluju. Uh, for a short while now, um, I'd like to invite Pastor Nathaniel Bassi to take us in worship for a few minutes. Take the stage, Lord, and I 
when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love, Pastor Tyler. Why should I care what people say? Hey, they don't know what you mean to me. Why should I feel when I have the Holy Ghost surrounded by your love? Saint into heaven and when you hear the sound of the trumpet please help me sh sh shout that hallelujah You can do much better. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. Thank you. Like they say, heaven will be sweet. 
Glory to God in the highest. At this time, we would have an exhortation, and this would be taken by Reverend Joe Olaya. Let's appreciate him as he comes up there. Shall we rise to our feet? Father, we thank you. We thank you. Even when we do not understand, we thank you. When we understand, we thank you. When we have questions, we thank you. When we know the answers, we thank you. Who can question you? Thank you and thank you. You are the only one that can give joy in any situation. Thank you for the joy of salvation. Thank you for the joy that cannot be explained. Thank you for joy unspeakable. Thank you for your peace that reigns. Holy Ghost, have your way. Just be glorified. Just be glorified. In this situation, be glorified. In every life, be glorified. Lord, we are just satisfied to see you glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated. I give all honor to God Almighty for a day like this. Because somewhere in God's book, it has been written that this, this day will be here. That you are here tonight is not by accident. I also give thanks to God for all the great men, our great leaders that are here with us. I thank God for your lives and I great thank God for the fathers of faith and thank you for a lot of colleagues, a lot of pastors. Our hearts are comforted. Where we know the best is yet to come. Let me hear you say amen. Let me hear another amen. amen. Thank you for everything and we thank God. In Matthew's gospel, written and numbered, written and numbered, the days for everyone written and numbered. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 29 to 31. And let this be an encouragement to you. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 29 to 31. And not two sparrows sold for a copper coin. Not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you have more value than many sparrows. I take that in the message version. It says, what's the price of a pet canary? Some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to it even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you down to the last details. Even numbering the hairs on your head. So don't be intimidated by all this bully talk. Don't be intimidated by all these bullish happenings. You are worth more than a million canaries. Can I hear you say amen to that? Now, can the women try to give me the statistics or the number for the hairs on their head? Any woman can help me. No, you, the owner of the head and the owner of the head doesn't even know the number. Now, listen, he doesn't say he knows the number. He says each hair strand is numbered. That means when any particular hair strand falls off, he knows it's number 1012 that fell off. I don't know whether you understand that. That is here number 1012. He didn't say, I know the number of hair strands. He said, every single hair strand on your head is numbered. 
And that brings me to the next point. In Psalm 139 verse 16. Psalm 139 verse 16 it says, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written. The days fashioned for me. When as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they will be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. I would like to read that in the message version. It says, like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life were all prepared before I even lived one day. Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them. I couldn't even begin to count them any more than I could count the sand of the sea. Oh, let me rise in the morning and live always with you. Pastor T, this is what he's saying. I saw you before you were born. Every day of your life was recorded in my book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are my thoughts about you. My thoughts about you cannot be numbered. Even if you are going to count them, they outnumber the grains of sand by the seashore. You will sleep and wake up. You will sleep and wake up and you will still be counting and you will not be done with counting. There is not a single thing happening to you, my brother, that is not written in the book. And I want to congratulate you because victory is on your side. And he says in Jeremiah 29 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God's word says, I am conscious of my thoughts about you, my son, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a hope at the end. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Declares the Lord. They are plans for peace. And not disaster. Plans to give you a future filled with hope. The New Living Translation says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So the good news, it's all in his book. And he makes all things to work together for good. When you are taking a bend on the highway, you're on a curve, either a left, a, I mean, a horizontal curve or a vertical curve. You can hardly see you the way ahead until you finish negotiating the bend. Job came through this bend, but he did not know what was after the bend. But he that says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord took him through the bend turned around everything for good, gave him 150 new years, restored every loss, removed every pain, turned everything to joy. That is a miracle waiting for you. So I say with every confidence, the best is yet to come. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is our strength. 
the best is yet to come. Thank God, all I have had all through this period has been very strengthening and encouraging. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We didn't lose a general. Her time was spent. The number of days written for her were complete and she's gone to glory. She's gone to glory because it takes the spirit of God to abide in love. The one thing Satan does not have is love. I don't know whether you understand that. I can tell you four things Satan has. He has pride. He has lies. He has hate. And he has uncleanness. But you walk in love and the devil doesn't stand there. You walk in truth, he doesn't stay there. The testimonies about our sister confirm she was abiding in love. And anyone that has love has eternal life. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our inner strength in the Lord is growing every day. The troubles and sufferings of, all, of ours, after all, are quite small and won't last very long. For this, yet this short time of distress will result in God's richest blessing upon us forever and ever. So we do not look at what we can see right now. The troubles all around us. But we look forward to the joy in heaven. Which we have not yet seen. The troubles will soon be over. But the joys to come will last forever. For we know. Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians verse 1. We know that when this tent we live in is taken down. When we leave these bodies. We will have a wonderful new body in heaven. Homes that will be ours forevermore. Made for us by God himself, not by human hands. How weary we grow in our present bodies. That's why we look forward eagerly to the day when we shall have heavenly bodies that we shall put on like new clothes. For we shall not be merely spirits without bodies. These earthly bodies make us groan and sigh. But we wouldn't like to think of dying and having no bodies at all. We want to sleep into our new bodies so that these dying bodies will, as it were, be swallowed up by everlasting life. This is what God has prepared for us. And as a guarantee, he has given us the Holy Spirit to confirm that we shall have these bodies. Now we look forward with confidence to our heavenly bodies, realizing that every moment we spend in this earthly body is time spent away from our eternal home in heaven with Jesus. We know these things are true by believing, not by seeing. And we are not afraid but we are quite content to die. For then we will be at home with the Lord. So our aim is to please him. Always in everything we do. Whether we are here in this body. Or away from this body. And with him in heaven. For we must all stand before Christ. To be judged. And have our lives laid bare before him. Each of us will receive whatever he deserves. For the good or the bad things he has done. In his earthly body. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. As our days go by, our strength diminish. But it's a pointer to us that there's a better housing for us. Don't be worried. Life is not about what we eat and do right here. It's about what you do that you'll be rewarded for in eternity. The troubles, the challenges we have are temporal. There's a joy eternal waiting for us that God has prepared. So I want to encourage you today that there is nothing you gather in this life that can replace your soul. Jesus said in Mark 8, 36 to 37, your soul is the single most valuable asset that you have. All the wealth of the world put together cannot pay for one soul. Mark 8, 36 and 37, Jesus said, What will it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Lifetime 
resources, skills, and talents are given to us. And you will be evaluated on what good you have done with those resources. What good you have done with time or what evil you have done with your time and resources. Today, I have listened to testimonies of lives that have been positively affected with the brief time of our sister. She came into this nation and had so much impact in such a while. Heaven has records. Solomon said, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For every work shall be evaluated. God is not going to evaluate how much you stopped. How much knowledge you had. How much money you made. How many houses you built. He is going to evaluate the resources he gave to you. What good you did with it. The good you were able to do, which you failed to do, and the evil you were able to prevent, which you failed to prevent, because you refused to use your, resource, your resources, your might, your time, your skill that God gave you. It is not how much you have stockpiled in resources. It is not how much knowledge you have and how much skill you have acquired over time. It is how much blessing you have, you have done these things to. How much you have been a blessing to mankind and how much glory you have brought to God. Joseph, the son of Jacob, used his God-given resources to save the world from perishing, from hunger in his time. He interpreted the dream of Pharaoh accurately and gave counsel that preserved the world in his time. He also saved his family from perishing from hunger including his brothers who sold him into slavery. He did not abuse his office to get even. He was large-hearted enough to forgive, to love, and to reconcile. He dealt with them as if they had never done him wrong. What a great example of Christian forgiveness. He had several opportunities to avenge himself, but will not do it. The money God has placed in your hand the position of authority you have. The houses you have built. The knowledge you have acquired. How much blessings have you made out of these things? For your generation. Today we celebrate a great woman. Who used, everyone was saying she was a giver. I was thinking, this one, she was a giver. So I, I think she gave out everything. She was a giver. She was a giver. She was a giver. I think she knew the secret. I met a man many years ago, was very wealthy, lived most of his life as an unbeliever. I pursued him with the gospel for nearly 10 years. He would not repent until he had a stroke. And from the stroke, he went into coma. And all his colleagues, big rascals, they were the top millionaires in Sokoto that time, big rascals. I preached to them, hunted them with the gospel. They would not listen to me. So when he had a stroke and he was in coma, they came to me, they said, Brother Joe, please pray for us. I said, pray for what? They told me our friend is in coma. I said, he must be on his way to hell. <laughs> they said, please pray, let him not die. Pray, I said, okay. I went to God and I prayed. And about 2 a.m., God told me, he said, I will, tell, I will send him back. I said, God, I promise you, if you send him back, please. My promise is that he's going to serve you. I'll tell him I made a vow on his behalf that he will serve you. That he will serve you. I, I, I vow he will serve you. This time, please don't take him away. So, after that prayer, he opened his eyes. I saw him the next morning. He was out of coma. He couldn't talk. His mouth was twisted. His hand was gone. One leg was gone. So, I said to him, yesterday you were on your way to hell. But I spoke to God and about 2 a.m. he told me that he will send you back. But I made a vow on one condition that if he sends you back, you will serve the Lord. Now, I want you to tell me whether you will serve the Lord or not so that I can go back and tell him you did not accept my vow. <laughs> yeah, then he, he nodded his head because he couldn't talk. His tongue was heavy. Saliva was dripping from his mouth. He nodded. I said, you will serve the Lord. I said, okay, okay. 
Thank you very much. I said, Lord, he has agreed he will serve you. He was a big rascal. He, he had all the money. Very intelligent. He had two degrees. He was a mechanical engineer. He was a medical doctor. His first degree was in mechanical engineering and he went for medicine. Very brilliant. Very hardworking. But very rascal. So I hunted him until that thing happened. So I said, okay, bring your hand. So I prayed. The hand came back. Then I prayed for his mouth. God twisted it back. Then his eyes, the blood vision, God cleared it. Then I said, this leg, I won't pray. Because if you get up, you will go back to your rascality. So I took the Bible. It's New Testament Bible. I said, take this Bible and begin to read on that seat until you mature. He began to preach to everyone that came to visit him and spoke to more rascals than I ever had opportunity to. And warn them they will be on their way to hell shortly if they don't turn back to God. One day he said to me, he said, you've been serving God from your youth and you've got a lot put off. He said, I have done little or nothing. I will preach every day of my life. Then he said, this is the biggest property I have. I have nothing in heaven. I will sign out this house to the Lord. If the Lord can use it. I'm leaving Nigeria. I'm going back to Europe. I'll spend the rest of my days here. But I have nothing in heaven. I've just come to know the Lord a few years. And he relocated. After some years. I was in the prayer village. The Lord just told me. He said, I'm about to take your brother home. If you want to see him, go and see him for the last time. If you don't go in the next two weeks, you may not see him. I quickly arranged my flight and I got into London. When the wife saw me, he said, Brother, what have you come for? I said, I came to see my brother. He said, thank you for coming. He said, but your brother has been showing us some signs. I said, like what? <clears throat> He's trying to take ill. I said, forget about it. So I went and sat with him. We chatted. We talked. I knew that was the last time I was seeing him. Because the Lord had told me he was taking him home. So I prayed with him. We spoke for a long time and encouraged his face. When I was going, the wife said to me, you see this one that you came, I don't understand. I said, you don't need to understand. Everything is well. Some days after they called me and they said the signs he was showing that he needed to, to be attended to. A few days after that, I sent one of my pastors after him. He, the Lord took him home. That is a home to go to. And I tell you the truth. If ever you see that home, you will not want to be back here. That is the truth. But let me caution you. Are you prepared for that home? The millions and the billions that the rich man had was not recognized after crossing the bridge of separation, which is called death. Because he had no contact with God. Written concerning you, God has written that you should be his child. Are you his child? If you are his child, you will go back home. But you cannot go back home if you are not his child. Sin separated us from God. But Jesus brought forgiveness. You cannot be forgiven except you want to be forgiven. You cannot be accepted except you willingly say you want to go back to the Father. Your sin cannot be forgiven except you regret the sin, you renounce it and give it up. If you still cherish your sin, he's not going to struggle with you over it. Jesus is the lamb that came to take away sin. He's only ready to die for the sins that are handed over to him. For as long as you want to keep your sin, he's not ready to struggle with you over it. As long as you want to enjoy it, he's not going to struggle with you. But as soon as you want to give it up, he is waiting to take it over. He defeated the trial of sin, sickness, and Satan 
He triumphed over death, grave, and hell. Rich men fear to die, and they want a charm or a medicine that they can take and never die. I got the medicine already. Because I met the man who talked about dying and confronting death and told us how many days he would be dead and told us how long he would be dead and told us how he would triumph and come from the dead. His name is Jesus. He actually confronted death, the, cruel, the, the worst death ever anybody can die on the cross. Mutilated, beaten, shattered, battered, bruised, broken. Then buried. Then he dealt with death. He dealt with the grave. He dealt with hell and rose from the dead. His blood he had given to pay for our sin. When he rose up, said, look, I'm flesh and bones. He was glistering and shining, radiating with light. He had conquered death. Brethren, we have found somebody who has conquered death. We don't need to be afraid of death again. And he says, because he lives, we shall live also. You want solution to death? Jesus. Three things to do, never to go to hell. Because there is a place of condemnation. Never stop believing Jesus all the days of your life. And never deny Jesus for any reason or any temporal benefits. The office you occupy is temporal. The money you have is temporal. Your holding on the house, when you stop breathing, your certificate of occupancy expires. The day you stop breathing, your right over that house is gone. So never deny Jesus. Never be too proud to repent whenever you do wrong. I see some Christians have developed hypocrisy. Pride plus Lucifer turned him into Satan. If you are a very, very proud person, then Luciferism is plaguing you. The reason why Satan has not repented up until now is because he is very, very proud. Proud people find it difficult to repent, but humble people easily repent. Never be too proud to acknowledge your wrong and to repent. And believer, never, never resist the Holy Spirit. Three things that will take some believers to hell. Hypocrisy, which is the living of the Pharisees. Unforgiveness, which is hate. Sin against the Holy Spirit, may you never commit it. The three characteristics that define Satan's nature, check yourself if you're a child of the devil. Pride, the abomination that transforms Lucifer to Satan. Lying, which is Satan's native language. Hate, the nature of the devil. And those who have these three are certified children of the devil. Are you a child of God? Three pillars to have. To hold on to. So that you can keep your salvation. Repentance. Genuine repentance never happens without humility. There must be sorrow for sin. And there must be willingness to give up sin. Many people have not overcome sin. Because one or two of these factors are missing. Either humility is missing. Genuine sorrow for sin is missing. Or willingness to give it up is missing. When the three come together, repentance will be full. But repentance alone does not bring redemption. Faith must be added to repentance. And faith that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son. Faith, son of God. Faith that Jesus died on the cross to take away your sins. And he rose from the dead. And faith that Jesus justified you by giving you his righteousness and eternal life after taking your sin from you. If you will allow this to happen in your life, then I can assure you that if you close your eyes in death, angels will be waiting to take you to glory. I met a man who died for three days and came back to life. We became friends. He preached himself until he died a second time. I said, Chidoze, stop, stop, you are overworking. He said, I made a mistake. That angel turned me back. They forced me to come back here and preach. I want to die quickly and go back to heaven. Say, this place is useless and rotten. He prayed 12 hours a day. He traveled by road, by air, by water, anything. I said, oh boy, slow down. He said, no, no, no. Let me overwork myself until I die. For that, I, that, I don't need the angel. Once I go now, I know the way. I will enter. And he preached all his life. Heaven is a place you celebrate. 
If you get there, you don't sorrow. Heaven is a place you will want to go to. There is no need to sorrow, brethren. But if you are under the sound of my voice, and you are not yet registered with eternal life, then you have all meant to be pitied. Let us pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer. There are two people God said I should talk to today. And I don't want to be guilty of your blood. You are here. That's why God said I should talk to you. Lord have mercy. You have said you lost your first love. And if you do not return to how you used to love him, your candlestick will be snuffed out. The light will be gone. You are here, but you don't love him like you used to love him anymore. The second person, he said, I should tell you, you are neither hot nor cold. He will spew you out. A word is enough for the wise. You know. Now, if you are here, you want to be forgiven. Can you just lift up your hand? I'll pray for you in a short while. Thank you. You want to be a child of God. You want to be forgiven. Just lift up your hand and wave it, and I'm going to pray for you. If you're asking for forgiveness tonight, say with me, my Lord and my God, I accept the good news of Jesus' death for me. I am truly sorry. I humble myself. I know I have done wrong. And I ask for forgiveness. I want to serve you. I'm willing to give up my sins. Please take them off me. Give me your righteousness. I believe you are the son of God. You died to take away my sins. You rose from the dead. Jesus, be my Lord from today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I believe your promise that you will not reject anyone that comes to you. I have come to you. Thank you for accepting me. I receive the gift of eternal life. Write my name in your book, even the book of life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray for these, your children. I pray for the lukewarm. I pray for those who left their first love. I pray that they will return today. I pray they will catch the fire again. I pray, Lord, let there be mercy. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven you. And Lord, I pray with our brother, what you have written concerning him will begin to come to pass. The glory of the latter days shall be more than the former. Your joy shall sustain him. Your joy shall sustain the family. Your blessings shall be upon their head. Rejoicing will begin in this home. Thank you and thank you and thank you. Glory be to God. In Jesus name we pray. Thank you, thank you Reverend Oliah. That was powerful. That was powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, as we're gradually coming um, to the end of a night of tribute to our dearly beloved Pastor Nomti Odukoya, would like to call our Father in the Lord, Bishop Michael Okonkwo, to pray for the family. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the soul, need rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. 
to the Vice President of the First Dry Republic of Nigeria and to the Executive Governor of Lagos State and all the ministers of the gospel we welcome you. We thank you for being with us on this very solemn occasion. Thank you for your love and all those who came from different parts of the world, the wonderful tributes that have been, that was paid to our dearly beloved daughter that has gone to be with the Lord. Um, I'm going to pray in a short while, but let me say one or two things, for, more especially to those of us who are members of this house. One of the challenges in Christianity is that when things like this happen, and we have a lot of questions. Why, why, why? And people begin to prefer different reasons that you don't even have. We give reasons we don't have. Please don't have a penchant of when things like this happen, they, they are in shock. When the Bible tells us we are living in a real world, Jesus said, in me you shall have peace, in the world you shall have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've deprived the world of the power to hurt you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Daniel, in book of Daniel 11.32, he says that those that do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt with flattery. But the people that do know their God is in adversity that you know those who know God. Many know church, but they don't know God. That's, that's our problem. Why, 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 why? If you read Second Kings chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible says, Elisha was sick. The man that had double portion anointing was sick. And he died in verse 20. And he was buried. He had double portion anointing. Things happen to us as men of God. Joshua chapter 1. And God said to Joshua. The servant, Joshua Moses. I mean said Moses the servant of the Lord is dead. In verse 2 he says Moses my servant. Is my servant. He's not your servant. He's dead. I want you to know that he is my servant. He's not your own. Numpty is not your servant. It's God's servant. Numpty is dead. She's gone to be with the Lord. So who are you to ask whether she lived long or lived short or lived uh, little or lived three quarter? Numpty, my servant. Joshua was busy wondering how we're going to get this job done. And God said, my friend, see that. Josh, Moses is not your servant. He is my what? Servant. So get up and go and get the job done. So I'm saying this to Fountainers. Get the job done. Get the job done. Look at the wonderful legacy she has left. Just this, just this short 12 years. Look at the, the beautiful and powerful testimonies. What else do you want? She's God's servant. <laughs> and one thing I know about God, you cannot hire him, you can't fire him. He's, he has not fallen out of his seat. You can't take him to court. So when you, when you complain and complain, he's, he just be looking at you. What will you do? That's when... When you can't trace him, you trust him. You trust him. Please, let's stand and stretch your hands towards them. This family. Father, we bless your name. We exalt you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you for the access unlimited, irrevocable, irreversible. 
iron clad and blood bought access you've given to us into your very presence we give you the praise we give you the honor for this moment for you've told us that in everything we should give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us we thank you and father we thank you for the life that your servant has lived lives that were touched healed delivered set free comforted established in your kingdom father we are grateful and now we pray for this family oh god i declare over your lives that heaven over you will never be shot that your ground will always produce i pray the comfort of the holy spirit i pray the peace of god that transcends human understanding i pray the mighty hand of god to rest upon you the children that god has given to you will not be vagabonds they are the seed of the righteous they shall be mighty upon the earth they shall eat of the riches of the gentiles it shall be said concerning them this is the offspring the lord has blessed you will not be frustrated you will not be discouraged you will stand strong the glory of god will rest upon you fountain of life will move from strength to strength in the name of jesus father another level for this ministry another level for this ministry another dimension for this ministry in the name of jesus evil will always bow before you the wicked will bow at your gate nothing will cut short your lives i bless you today with the blessing of dominion the blessing of possession the blessing of increase the blessing of abundance the blessing of peace the blessing of life in the name of jesus thank you father blessed be your name in Jesus' name we are prayed. And everyone shout a loud amen. amen. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, just uh, one announcement uh, before we close. Call it a day. Um, tomorrow, the funeral service is right here at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Um, would like to extend our thanks to uh, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, for being with us at this time. Thank you. <laughs> would also like to thank the Executive Lagos, the Executive Governor of uh, Lagos State, um, His Excellency. Uh, thank you uh, for your time. We thank all our uh, grandfather in the Lord, uh, Bishop Mike Okonkwa, and our grandmother in the Lord, Bishop Peace Okonkwa. Thank you to uh, our friend in the house who ministered, um, Reverend Joalaya. God bless you for being with us. Thank you for all the ministers. Uh, thank you to everyone who has showed up, Fountaineers. You are lovely. God bless you. Uh, the pastors, God bless you. So tomorrow is at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Um, before we share the grace, uh, Pastor Tolu, just take that song one more time. Um, take the stage. Shall we rise, please? Then we will share the grace. When we share the grace, please let our guests leave first uh, before we start to move out. Just take the stage, Lord. And have, have your, your way. way I'm just a vessel And nothing more And when you're done Please take the glory I'm satisfied Just, just to see you Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. 
And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.